Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a floor and ceiling equation. So we're given that the ceiling value of 3x plus 5 times the floor value of x is equal to 9 and we're supposed to solve for x values. Let's go ahead and quickly remember what those values are. If you have a number like let's say 3.14 and you're trying to find the floor value, it is going to be 3 because you're supposed to round it down to the nearest integer. And if you have the ceiling value of an expression or a number, then you're supposed to round it up to the nearest integer. In this case, it will be a 4. Now, let's go ahead and start by naming this floor value of x n. So I'm going to name this n. And this gives me floor value of x equals n. And obviously, this gives me an inequality. So one of the nicest things about floor and ceiling equations is that you start with an equation, and then you get an inequality, and then you solve it, and then you get an equation, so on and so forth. So you kind of go back and forth. This implies that x is between and and n plus 1. So x is greater than or equal to n and at the same time less than n plus 1. The second one comes from our equation when we do the substitution. 3x plus 5n is equal to 9. And this implies that 3x plus 5n, now you got to remember this is the ceiling value. So we can take anything greater than 8, like 8.1, but it also needs to be less than or equal to 9. If you have an integer, its floor and ceiling value are going to equal the same integer. Okay, now we do have two inequalities. Let's go ahead and this one and this one. Let's go ahead and work each one. So I'm going to start with this one. Let me go ahead and simplify that first. If you subtract 5n, you should be getting this. Let's divide everything by 3 because 3 is a positive quantity. quantity. So it would not matter, like the inequality would not change. All right? So that's one of my inequalities that I'd like to be using. And the second one comes from here. So let's go ahead and copy that here. X is between and 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 plus 1. So I do have two inequalities. So it's kind of like a system of inequalities. Let's go ahead and solve this system. Now, we have two variables, so but we can work with the boundaries. So we do have a lower bound and an upper bound, so we can go ahead and compare them. For example, 8 minus 5 and over 3 needs to be less than n plus 1, obviously, right? So let's go ahead and write that down as an inequality. 8 minus 5 and over 3 needs to be less than n plus 1. If you go ahead and multiply both sides by 3, you get the following. And then putting n's on the same side, 8n is greater than 5. And n is greater than 5 8 so that's one of the inequalities solved. Let's go ahead and solve the second one. Now, in the second inequality, what I need to do is compare these two quantities. Obviously, this means that n is less than 9 minus 5n over 3. And this implies 3n is less than 9 minus 5n. If you put both numbers on the same side, you should be getting n is less than 9 over 8. So I got this and I got that. So I got to put these two together. That means that n needs to be between 5 over 8 and 9 over 8. And remember that n is an integer because the floor value or the ceiling value by definition of any quantity is always an integer. So the only integer that can go in this interval is n equals 8 over 8, which is 1. So n needs to equal 1. Great. Now. Having said that, now what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and substitute n equals 1 into both of these inequalities and get a system from there. And I'm going to solve that system and eventually, hopefully, we can turn that into an equation. So like I said earlier, we're going to go back and forth between equations and inequalities. So let's go ahead and substitute n equals 1 into both of these inequalities. So one of them is going to give me 8 minus 5 over 3. And the other side is going to give me 9 minus 5 over 3. This means that x is between 1 and 4 thirds. And the other one is going to give me, if you remember, that was x between n and n plus 1. So x needs to be between 1 and 2. So I have these two inequalities, and I have to find their intersection. So easiest way to find the intersection is to use a number line. So we have 1, we have 4 thirds, and we have 2. One of the inequalities says that my expression needs to be between the two, these two values, and of course it can equal 4 thirds. The other one just says that, 
okay, your expression needs to be between 1 and 2. It can equal 1, but 1 is not in the intersection, so we're looking at the intersection here. And the intersection is basically going to be the values of x that are between 1 and 4 thirds, where x can equal where x can equal 4 thirds, okay? So I basically got two inequalities here from n equals 1. Let me just summarize my findings. One of them gave me this, and the other one gave me this. And their intersection is going to be x is between, maybe I shouldn't, I can just write the intersection here. Well, I can just write it here, I guess. x is going to be between 1 and Four thirds. Of course, x can equal four thirds in this case, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye bye.